Welcome back to Sprague River Homestead. I heard you're interested in going solar. But I tell you what, there's some hidden costs for solar that nobody ever talks about. Today I'm gonna let you in on a little secret of those costs. Okay, so you wanna go solar, but everybody always talks about the investment, the upfront cost and how much it costs to do it. Very few people actually want to talk about what it costs long term after the initial investment and what do you got to do from there. So today we're going to talk about all the little pieces of going solar and what happens after you put everything in and how do you maintain it. So let's first start by talking about what happens with your panels. Of course the sun hits them, they convert the sunlight into electrons which goes in to charge your batteries or however you generate the power. Your panels themselves are gonna need a little bit of maintenance. First off for us, we have two settings. We kind of have a uh, kind of a horizontal here, and we have a more vertical which dips them very far down. This is based on where the sun is in the sky in a winter or a summer setting. So two times a year, we have to adjust our panels. Now while that isn't a investment in money is an investment in time so it takes us uh, approximately 30 minutes twice a year so you can value your time of that if you want to convert it to money but you need to adjust your panels if you're not doing some kind of a tracking system to follow the sun so for us that's a matter of we take each section we either drop it down for a winter setting so it's a little bit more vertical or we need to raise it up in the summer and put it back in the setting so again 30 minutes twice a year to do that. The next thing you got to consider with your panels is keeping them clean. In summer or spring, that could mean uh, bird droppings, that could mean dirt, that can mean pollen. All of those things block the sun from hitting your panels. So you'll notice uh, during the summer that you start getting diminished results or diminished charging off your panels. It just means they're dirty. So you might want to wash them. You might just spray them off. You could wash them with maybe a glass cleaner if you have access to it, or however you want to clean it, but you got to clean them off. That could take upwards of maybe 20, 30 minutes every month to every two months, and that's a value of time. Now in the winter, when there's snow, if snow is on your panels, you're not generating power. So Worst case scenario, what we found is that in the winter, sometimes we have to come out and clean all of our panels twice a day because it has snowed and they're not making power. So we have a nice long handled squeegee, come out, squeegee all the panels off, getting the snow pulled down on the ground. Now that is another investment of time other than you need to probably buy your squeegee, which may be 20 or 30 bucks depending on what you buy. The time, Sometimes it's upwards of 20 to 25 minutes to scrape off all the snow. If you do that once, twice a day, that could be 30 to 60 minutes per day over the winter to try and keep your panels clean to charge. All right, so the next hidden cost for solar may be how you back up your power. Now, it's not necessarily storage, but generation. For us, we have a diesel generator that is a backup. So the days we have no sun, or little sun or anything else, we run a diesel generator as a backup that charges all of our battery banks. Now, we don't have to run this a lot, but we have to run it enough that I need to do an oil change on it every season in order to keep it fresh. Most conventional oils on these little small diesel generators probably run 75 to 100 hours where they need an oil change with a filter. Typically, I run synthetic in ours so I can extend that out a little bit upwards of 100 hours of runtime, which for us is equivalent to about one year of service. Now, between the oil and the filter, I spend somewhere between $50 to $60 typically, and it takes me approximately about 30 to 45 minutes to do all the oil change, which includes a filter, drain the oil, put the plug back in, add the new oil, and then it's good to go. Coolant, you'll probably do, uh, kind of depends. You could probably get a couple years out of a coolant service with a small radiator. Just keep an eye on it, add any coolant or distilled water if you need to. 
there again doing that it doesn't take more than a gallon so you might be in about ten dollars or so to a complete gallon of coolant and if you had to add some distilled water maybe a dollar to dollar fifty per gallon so consider that a little bit of investment of course you've got time so maybe let's say an hour total and then for your investment you may need to spend about 60 let's say 60 dollars a year for an oil change and maintenance on your diesel generator so with all of your power generation costs identified now let's talk about storage so for us we run a lead acid battery bank we have 16 batteries all connected together and that gives us a total of approximately 40,000 watts of storage now that's power in order to maintain these every approximately 30 to 45 days I go through and I check the water on these so in that time period I normally use about a gallon to two gallons of distilled water sometimes I go three it depends so let's consider three is our maximum every time and that's every 45 days or a month and a half so probably about seven to eight times a year you're going to use let's say you're going to use 20 gallons of distilled water every year as a worst case scenario they're about a dollar fifty so you're going to spend somewhere in the thirty dollar range on distilled water beyond keeping those batteries good that time is approximately 30 minutes maybe 45 minutes every time you do that so eight times a year you're going to spend let's say 30 minutes a piece so you're going to spend four hours a year maintaining your batteries if any of these batteries go bad, they are approximately $400 each, and that is going to be a cost depending on what you need. Now, the manufacturer has told us that if you keep your batteries at 80% level, they expect them to last 10 years. So, keep good on your batteries. Let's say every 10 years you may have to replace your total system, which is approximately $4,000, maybe a little bit more, somewhere in there. If one goes bad, you may have to replace them, you know, maybe one a year. Kind of depends on the luck of the draw a little bit. Plus, it's going to depend on your ability to keep them watered and maintained. All right, so now if you really do get 10 years out of your batteries, one thing you're going to have to consider is do you go back to doing the lead acid batteries as a replacement? Now, in 10 years from now, or let's say seven, because we've been on solar for about three years, in seven years from now, we may switch to something else. I know lithium ion is really coming on. Uh, Tesla's got a new home power thing that's about 10,000 watts, so you could take four of those, replace all your batteries, and then you don't really have a lot of maintenance other than doing it. The panels themselves are rated for 30 years, and they have a rating of 80% output at 30 years. So in the next three decades of doing all of this, we can still put out over 5,000 watts because we have a five or a 6,000 watt system now that's probably gonna work for us it's still good the reason we have such a big system is typically the worst case scenario for us is we only make a couple kilowatts a day and we really have to tax our batteries on the winter to be able to do that so there's kind of the hidden cost of solar you're gonna have time involved obviously you'll have a little bit of monetary investment into it on replacement parts and maintenance and that's really the things people don't ask about or talk about. It's always about how much does it cost to get into it versus how much does it cost to keep going. So that's it today from Sprague River Homestead. Hopefully you guys find this educational on what it costs to maintain your solar. And we'll see you next time.